And now, it is time. It's time to end the agony for everybody who's present. And I think that's especially acute, obviously, for the authors and those who've accompanied them this evening. I thank you once again for all the pleasure and joy and sometimes pain in terms of making us confront particular issues. I thank you very much indeed for that experience. So, let me get this right, let me put this down. <laughs> we will have no Oscar moment here. The winner of the 2017 Man Booker Prize for Fiction is ooh, Lincoln in the Bardo, George Saunders. Your Royal Highness, readers and writers, it's all downhill from here. <clears throat> Thank you so much. What a, what a wonderful honor. Um, well, I'd like to just quickly thank some people in the, on the U.S. side, uh, Esther Newberg, Susan Camel, Barbara Fillon, Kelly Gilday, and my great friend Andy Ward, uh, whose faith in me and my work has made me, a, a, I think, a better writer and a better person, I hope. Uh, over here in this beautiful country, which at the moment I'm madly in love with even more than usual, uh, <clears throat> I'd like to thank my dear family at, at Bloomsbury, uh, especially Nigel Newton, Ross Ellis, my uh, English railroad pal. We did 1,300 miles in one day last year. Uh, and the miraculous Alexander Pringle, who's had my back for so many years now. Yeah, let's... let's <laughs> she's had my back with her sage advice, her joyful nature, and her true generosity of spirit. Uh, she took a big leap of faith on this book, for which I'll be forever grateful. Uh, it's been a profound honor to be on the same shortlist with my new friends, Paul, Emily, Mosin, Fiona, and Ali. In each of your books, I found a wonderful soul, uniquely embodied in refined prose. I will never forget the gift of being here beside you. I want to thank the Man Booker Prize, the chair, and the prize judges for their incredibly hard work. I'd also like to thank all the critics who wrote about the book, all of them, uh, and, <laughs> and, and also especially all of the booksellers who sold it. <clears throat> When I had about the first third of the book written, I got a little freaked out by, by reading what I had written. And I thought, well, this has been a lot of fun up till now. I wonder if any other human being could actually understand it. So as I often do in a crisis, I turned to my wife, who uh, on a post-it note after reading that first third wrote me something so generous that it will stay a secret forever, uh, but gave me the confidence to go on. So thank you, Paula, a precious friend, visionary, artistic hero, my guide always to the higher ground, even when I have to go there kicking and screaming. Thanks also to our dear daughters, Caitlin and Elena, who've taught me through their kindness and dignity, and dignity all there is to know about the deep spiritual rewards of parenting. As you might have noticed, we live in a strange time. We, I've noticed it. Um, <clears throat> so the question at the heart of the matter, I think, is pretty simple. Do we respond to fear with exclusion and negative projection and violence, or do we take that ancient great leap of faith and do our best to respond with love and with faith in the idea that what seems other is actually not other at all, but just us on a different day. In the U.S. now, we're hearing a lot about the need to protect culture. Well, this tonight is culture. It's international culture. It's compassionate culture. It's activist culture. It's a room full of believers through the word in ambiguity and beauty and in trying to see the other person's point of view, even when that's hard. Believers in working to eliminate hatred and meanness and lazy habitual thinking, even when, especially when, we find these in ourselves. In I Stand Here Ironing, uh, a story by the great American writer Tilly Olson, the main character utters a kind of prayer for her daughter, thinking of the hardships this girl has had to endure because of their poverty. A prayer that, for me, encapsulates the highest aspirations of literature. She says, only help her to know, help make it so there, there, there is cause for her to know that she is more than just this dress on the ironing board, helpless before the iron. Well, the iron is upon us, friends, all over the world. So help us to know, help make it through our actions and the products of our imagination so that there is cause for us to know and for others to know that we are not helpless before the iron and will not tolerate anyone else being made helpless before it either. Thank you so very much for this great honor, which I hope to live up to with the rest of my work for the rest of my life.
Thank you.